Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the fourth session of the, our virtual state conference, Keep Louisiana Beautiful, Focus on the Future, educating, engaging, and expanding with our very own executive director, Susan Russell, and joining Susan will be ULL Sustainability Director, Gretchen Vanacor. My name is Cabell Mouton, and I'm the Affiliate and Grant Manager for Keep Louisiana Beautiful. Susan and Gretchen will be announcing two new strategic initiatives to expand Keep Louisiana Beautiful's reach and influence throughout the state today. The first initiative that you will hear about today will expand our footprint and increase support of local community efforts to prevent litter, reduce waste, increase recycling, and beautify public spaces by launching our very first state community affiliate. The second initiative will expand to higher education by creating a university level affiliate, affiliate program. This program will educate and engage the next generation of business leaders and community leaders on environmental issues such as waste reduction, litter prevention, and marine debris. We've been working on this for a very long time, so it's very exciting to be able to announce these two initiatives to you today. A few housekeeping notes before we get started. One is all of you are muted and off camera for the duration of the session. However, we wanna hear from you. So please submit your questions in the Q&A box below at the bottom of your screen. And also feel free to comment on anything relative to the topic. And I will be um, facilitating those questions and those comments. So I, I wanna hear from you. We wanna be interactive. Um, the third thing is that this session will be recorded and, and, and on Keep Louisiana Beautiful's website probably in early November. Um, it's at keeplouisianabeautiful.org. And lastly, all of the webinars are free and open to everyone. We have two sessions left after today and it's not too late to register, so please check out our conference information on our um, webpage and share with your colleagues or anyone that you think that the information could be beneficial to their work. So um, the link to register is on our website. So before we get started, I have the honor and the privilege to present to you Keep Louisiana Beautiful's 2020 Circle of Excellent Award recipients. Each year, Keep Louisiana Beautiful honors Keep America Beautiful affiliates in Louisiana who meet certain benchmarks throughout the year set by Keep Louisiana Beautiful. The benchmarks are grounded in training, professional development, commitment to the state network, and their effort to bring about lasting change in their local communities regarding litter removal, prevention, community engagement, waste reduction, recycling, and environmental education. The affiliate network is the backbone of our organization. Um, these people are our relentless advocates for a clean and beautiful Louisiana. And uh, if you have an affiliate in your community, I would encourage you to reach out to them because they are amazing people and they do some amazing work for your community. Each of the recipients will receive a plaque and a $500 cash award to be used to further the mission of their organization. There are 31 affiliates today that will be receiving this honor of the Circle Excellence Award. On behalf of Keep Louisiana Beautiful, Keep Louisiana Be Beautiful Board, we thank you for all that you do for com your community. We thank you for what you do for Louisiana. If you could pull up the slide, please. The affiliates today that will be celebrating this award are Abbeville, Abita Springs, Ascension, Assumption, Baton Rouge, Bossier, Calcasieu, Covington, DeSoto, DeRitter, East Feliciana, Eunice, Hammond, Jefferson, Lacombe, Lafayette, Lake Charles, Mandeville, Monroe, Natchitoches, New Orleans, Washita, Shreveport, Slidell, St. John, St. James, St. Mary, St. Tammany, Tangibahoe, West Baton Rouge, and West Monroe. 
congratulations to all of you affiliates for all of your hard work throughout the year. Now let me introduce to you our presenters for today. This is very exciting. Our very own Susan Russell, Executive Director of Keep Louisiana Beautiful. Susan has 30 years of experience specializing in nonprofit management, strategic planning, program development, and implementation. She has 30 plus years experience in grant administration, communications, and marketing. Susan brings together a large network of stakeholders throughout the state to build and sustain vibrant, clean communities. With a focus on building community capacity, influencing positive behavior through education, strengthening litter enforcement, and improving infrastructure and policy, Susan leads efforts to prevent litter, increase recycling, and beautifying public spaces. Welcome, Susan. Good morning. I'd like to introduce our second presenter today is Gretchen Vanacore. Gretchen is the Director of Sustainability for University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Gretchen focuses on implementing and assessing institutional holistic sustainability efforts across ULL's campus and in the community. Gretchen has, I have to read her degrees because it's so many, excuse me. Gretchen has a Bachelor's of Science in Management and Marketing from McNeese State University, a Bachelor of Arts and Master's degree in Architecture from UL Lafayette, and she is currently pursuing her educational doctorate in higher education leadership from UL Lafayette, as well as raising a family. Her research and professional interests focus on using campus as a living lab for sustainable development and community resiliency strategies. Gretchen is also a Keep Louisiana Beautiful board member. Good morning, Gretchen. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Awesome. Thank you for being with us. I'm going to throw it to Gretchen. Will you come back and see us in a few minutes? I'm going to throw it to sure. Susan and let her present on the community affiliates and then we'll bring you back on. Thank you, Cabell. And thank you everyone for joining us. Sorry, I had my mic muted. So, you know, we're two minutes into this, I'm already messing up. So hopefully that's not a sign of, of what the next 90 minutes will be like. But thank you everyone for making time in your busy day to join us. And a special shout out to all of our Circle of Excellent winners that Cabell mentioned. You know, we are so used to being able to give these awards to you in person and give you a hug and a kiss and y'all are like family to us. So we, uh, we regret that it has to be done virtually, but all the same, we're glad that we're able to recognize you and honor you for the work that you do for Louisiana. So, so let's get started. You know, at Keep Louisiana Beautiful, we bring together people to build and sustain vibrant, clean communities through a network of organizations and civic and community groups, business partners, state and local governments, schools, churches, and citizens. We provide tools, resources, education um, to protect and preserve the natural beauty of Louisiana. By harnessing the collective power of our network, we multiply our impact. I'm gonna repeat this because I think it's so very important and it's the basis really of this entire presentation. By harnessing the collective power of our network, we multiply our impact. So if you believe this to be true, and I do, then we need to increase our network, our collective power, so that we can increase our impact. And that, my friends, is exactly what we aim to do with these two initiatives. But before we get started with the entire presentation, I want to review and look at really what guides and grounds this organization. So our mission statement is to promote personal, corporate, and community responsibility for a clean and beautiful Louisiana. Our brand vision engaging people to take personal responsibility for their actions for a clean and beautiful Louisiana and our brand positioning. To those who love Louisiana, Keep Louisiana Beautiful is the state's premier anti-litter and beautification organization that connects all segments of the community to participate in improving and preserving the appearance of our state for generations to come. So there are a few words that really stand out to me in this. Promote, engaging, responsibility, 
connects, participate. Separately, these words are strong, but when we see them together, they're so powerful and they serve as our calling card. Keep Louisiana Beautiful promotes a better way of life. We engage Louisiana citizens in our programs and campaigns. We teach environmental responsibility. We connect people with resources, training and education. And we provide opportunities to participate through volunteerism. We know Keep Louisiana Beautiful is successful at doing this because we track our outcomes and we have the data to support it. But we also know that these issues are very complicated. Litter prevention, reducing and managing waste, increasing recycling, marine debris, illegal dumping and general community neglect. These problems aren't easily solved or resolved. They affect 4.7 million people in 64 parishes throughout Louisiana. And although these solutions might sometimes seem cloudy, I think what we need to do is very clear. We aim to expand our sphere of influence and leverage the power of collectiveness to maximize our impact resulting in clean and beautiful communities in Louisiana. And we do this by making it easy for groups and for people to help, by being flexible and by offering a variety of ways of participation. Currently, Keep America Beautiful, our parent organization, offers one level of affiliation and it's in the form of a certified affiliate organization. These organizations are established with bylaws and mission statements. They're managed by an affiliate director and led by a board of directors. The certification process is pretty extensive. It involves community assessments and litter surveys and certification training and reporting and fees. But once certified, those affiliates can participate in all Keep America Beautiful and Keep Louisiana Beautiful programs, grants, and campaigns. They have the opportunity to learn and network from 650 affiliates throughout our country. In Louisiana, we have 40 certified Keep America Beautiful affiliates. These affiliates are doing amazing work in their local communities and are so valuable to Louisiana. Early in this presentation, we honored many of them with our Circle of Excellence Award. We work very closely with this group to help them so that they can be successful in their local communities. We know that change happens quicker and is more impactful on a local level. But one of the challenges that we as a state office face and one of the ones that we want to address with these new initiatives is that not every community that wants to help and wants to learn and be a part of this network has the capacity or the desire or resources to become an organization. And so we want to create options. I think options are good. And so starting in July of 2021, Keep Louisiana Beautiful will start bringing in state community affiliates as well as uni university affiliates. These options of affiliation will be the pathway for smaller community groups and university students and, and faculty to be a part of our affiliate network and our mission work. We realize that one size does not fit all, that we need to offer a variety of ways for, be for people to be of help and to be a part of our mission. And that not every community has the capacity, the resources and the desire to run an organization. And this should not limit their involvement with our state office. So there are opportunities through the state and university affiliates. We will bring thousands of new advocates from different parts of our state with fresh ideas, enthusiasm, and hope for a better tomorrow. The more people in groups that are in our family, the more excitement will be generated, the greater the momentum, and the easier it will be for funders and stakeholders and elected officials to back our mission work. Some of the opportunities will be engagement with existing groups, broadening our reach, increasing statewide volunteers and participants, a greater stakeholder engagement. 
We will strengthen our efforts to unify our programs, our messaging, and our branding. We will leverage partnerships and funding opportunities. We'll have a greater network opportunities and data collection will be broader. And I think it's going to be a bit more accurate as well. And this is a possible incubator for KAB affiliation. So the state affiliates, as mentioned, will attract smaller cities and established groups who want to be a part of the solution and want to be engaged in the community, but don't necessarily want to, I'm sorry, that don't necessarily want to create a run an organization. And so we know that because change happens on a local level that we want to be able to support those local, um, those local changes. And so our, the, the main difference between our state structure and our existing national affiliation um, is really in that structure itself. And so our national organization, as mentioned, is a full organization. And um, they have more responsibilities, but they also receive more benefits and greater value. All Keep America Beautiful affiliates in Louisiana receive those national and state benefits where state community affiliates will only receive benefits provided by our state office. So, the main difference, like I said, is that a state affiliate will be established as a committee within an established civic community or government organization instead of becoming their separate independent organization. Leadership will be provided by a steering committee as opposed to a board of directors. The steering committee chair will serve as our point of contact as opposed to a full affiliate director. And the committee will run by guidelines and a statement of purpose instead of bylaws and a mission statement. And they'll have association with Keep Louisiana Beautiful as the state affiliate. Some of the benefits that they will receive, they will be able to use the Keep America Beautiful name. They'll be able to network with states in different um, affiliates throughout our state. They'll be branding and association guidance from our staff award recognition and tools and resources and guidebooks, programs, campaigns, webinars, conference. They'll be eligible to apply for one affiliate grant and they'll be eligible to apply for healthy communities grants as any groups are throughout our state. We'll have statewide outcomes and data and they'll be in the know with us and they'll receive our communications and our newsletter and they'll be uh, invited to participate in our bi-monthly affiliate networking opportunities. And I see Cabell has joined us. And so that means that y'all must have some questions. So I'm gonna take a break, get a little breather and uh, answer some of y'all questions. Cabell, what you have for me? Uh, we do have one question, Susan. I think it was related to um, the slide number eight. What would be some good examples of civic and community and government agencies that would make a great community state affiliate? Sure. So I'll give you an example. So an example might be a chamber of commerce. Okay, an established organization that clearly it is in their best interest for a healthy business community um, and economy. And so, as we know, there's a lot of connections between clean um, and inviting um, communities and business uh, vitality. And so they could decide that they want to look at improving it. Um, the, the business corridors and their memberships and bringing their memberships on board with that. So they could be the overarching um, organization and from there a committee could be formed um, that is the, the Keep Blank Beautiful Committee and that chair and members serve on that committee and they decide what they're going to do um, to to improve their community. So because they are a business membership organization, let's say they decide that they want to um, uh, really do a push to all businesses in their membership to um, make sure they have ash and trash receptacles in their places of business. Maybe they uh, want to do a pledge drive with their membership to 
for their members to pledge that every morning and uh, at closing, their employees will walk the sidewalks and the parking bays to make sure that their businesses um, are, are the surrounding areas are litter free. Maybe they host um, an annual cleanup by the chamber, those types of things. And so that committee would run the programs and initiatives for that membership. The beauty of that is that they don't necessarily have to go out in the community for volunteers. They could if they choose, but because of their membership, they're a membership organization, their members are that captive audience that can volunteer and support those initiatives. In addition, those businesses can also be great supporters, sponsors, and funders for some of these initiatives. So that would be an example, Cabell, of um, a group that could be the uh, umbrella supporting organization for a community affiliate. Okay. If that's it, we will get back to our presentation. And I believe we are on slide 10, which are the annual requirements. And so um, I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly. Uh, there will be reporting that they will be required to have as well as an active committee and point of contact. There will be an annual fee. They can use the name and logo. They must conduct one beautification, litter prevention or waste reduction program each year. And they must conduct at least one Love the Boot cleanup each year. They will receive four hours of training or professional development, conduct a litter survey and participate in at least three of the six networking calls. Next slide, please. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna to try to make this as quick as, and easy as possible for everyone in the sense um, that a lot of this will be done online. So knowing that our, we have a small staff and we do think we're gonna have a good response to this, um, we're gonna start by having those people who think they're interested to go to our website and really to do kind of like a self uh, determining uh, readiness kind of quiz where there'll be a list of questions of things that they need to consider um, before they contact us. And if they do a self-assessment and they determine that they are ready, then they can reach out to us. Next slide, please with an inquiry form, again, all online. And we will follow up and do our own readiness determination um, assessment. Um, at that time, they will be either invited to apply or some other recommendations will be suggested to them. Each year we will limit the number of applications that we receive. Uh, I mean, that we accept and priority will be given to those areas that do not have current representation and consideration will be given to the proximity of other active affiliates as well. Next slide, please. And so applications will be accepted on November 1st and um, April 1st of every year. Um, they need to identify that host organization, such as like that ch the chamber, that will provide the oversight for the committee. They'll need a letter of support and an application fee that covers the training and support we provide. And the formation process. So what they need to do is they will need to form that committee, which will kind of serve as their leadership or their board of directors in a sense. That can be an existing committee within the organization, or they might need to form a new committee. They will adopt guidelines. They'll identify members to serve on that committee. They'll identify the point of contact. They will create a statement of purpose. They'll receive training from us. They'll do a litter assessment, and then they'll uh, create and adopt a one-year plan. And so the success that will come from this will be local engagement and awareness, greater understanding, um, greater understanding and education on related issues, networking and sharing of best practices and trends and strategies, consistent programming and messaging, statewide data and measurements and advocacy and a groundswell of support. And so now I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and I'm gonna talk about the university affiliate and then I'm gonna bring on Gretchen who has um, just some exciting, exciting news to share with y'all. So 
This is our second growth initiative is our university affiliates. And I'm not gonna go into all the details about application and benefits and all of that because in a lot of ways, it's very similar um, to what we just discussed. But I wanna tell you a little bit about how this even came about. And so actually it started several years ago, Dean Yorbro at ULL, who at the time was on our board of directors. We started talking about getting the universities more involved. Um, Fast forward to last year, really about this time last year, we decided that, you know, we're going to really start working on this project in earnest. And so we had a small group um, that we were working on putting, you know, the, the, the meat on the bones and, and getting into some of the details. And, um, and, you know, Cabell and I, we were able to pull together um, the structure and the, the, the basic you know, stuff, the things that we knew needed to be there. But neither one of us had ever worked in higher ed. So we knew that a university structure was quite different than a community. And we knew we needed to get the expertise and input from uh, folks in the Office of Sustainability in a variety of universities. And Dean Yorbro and Gretchen Vandercore had been working with us from ULL from the very beginning and just fantastic. Um, and they helped us put together a steering committee um, that that really was um, repre it represented six different universities. Um, some of them were uh, private, some public, some of them are small, some of them are large. On this slide, you will see the people that served on our steering committee uh, from Grambling, the Department of Ed. LSU, Nichols, Xavier, Tulane, and ULL. And these folks really, like I said, brought in some just some additional insight and um, had us really uh, look at things that that we wouldn't have, you know, even known that we should should be doing or not doing. And so it is because of this group of folks and and their dedication to this project that we're able to um, share with you uh, this, this new initiative. But I want to also share with you one of the unexpected consequences of this interaction. So as we began meeting and going over the ins and outs of, of what this is going to look like, um, ultimately at the at the end of each meeting there were these side conversations going on and they were sharing the different campaigns and programs and things that they were doing on campuses or maybe some of the challenges as they they had and there was a lot of this going back and forth and, and sharing information and excitement and it revealed to me that this was another opportunity for keep louisiana beautiful and it through these conversations, it also it came to, to, to surface that there was no formal way uh, for these offices of sustainability to communicate and to network within the university structure. And so we are going to pull together a, a sustainability forum um, made up of the Office of Sustainability from universities throughout Louisiana and actually anyone in the sustainability uh, profession in industry. And this will be a, a, a platform for these people to share best practices and trends and ideas and network so that we all can grow and, and, and um, get straight strength from each other. So that was uh, just an exciting thing that came from this that we had not anticipated. And so um, back in going back now, uh, a year ago, as I said, we had this small group of folks that we were pulling together this university affiliate that uh, we were really excited about and we knew we were committed to, to doing. And one day I got an email and across my desk came a trash free waters and EPA grant. I shared the information with Gretchen and she just took the ball and ran with it. And several weeks later, uh, Keep uh, Louisiana Beautiful and ULL submitted a grant application for funding. And months later, we were thrilled to learn that we were awarded $500,000 in grant. Um, and what that will actually do is take this university affiliate level and provide funding to make sure that it gets off the ground in a big way and happens. And so it is just one of really the most 
thrilling and exciting programs and announcements that we have had um, since I've been here for the last five years. And so I am now gonna stop talking because I want to bring on Gretchen Vanacore because she has just the exciting news. She's gonna walk y'all through the grant and all the wonderful opportunities it will um, provide for our universities throughout our state. So Gretchen, it's your turn to take it away. Thank you, Susan. Um, so thank y'all again for um, allowing me to come and speak during the um, Keep Louisiana Beautiful Conference. Um, this is this sort of work is work that I've been doing on campus with Dean Yarbrough um, for seven years now. Um, we have taken an interest not only in keeping our campus beautiful, but in really sort of trying to hone down and really drill down and figure out why do we continue to have litter problems. Um, about, so two years ago, we applied for a healthy community grant through Keep Louisiana Beautiful. And uh, this one we did a little bit different than we had done previous ones. Um, this one we wanted to focus really in on just identifying why we continue to have litter problems um, around campus, around the community. Um, and we started really looking in depth at was it because of um, events that happen in the community? Was it because our students um, really just didn't care about our environment? Or was it because we had operational deficiencies? And ultimately what we found is it was a pretty large combination of lots of different things, um, but less than what I think we, we tended to think for a long time, it really wasn't as much our students as we believed in the past that it, it may have been them that were littering our campus. So we took from that, um, we were very excited about it, um, but we knew that this was something that could really propel a Keep Louisiana Beautiful University Affiliate Program. Um, really changing the conversation from students, you need to go out and pick up litter because you created the problem to students, can you help us identify the problem and help us develop solutions? Um, and we found that that really changed the way students engaged with us. Um, we've been doing large scale litter um, pickups on campus and in the community um, for many, many years. Um, my boss, President Savoy, really despises litter um, and he picks up litter all the time on his own. Um, so this was something that we were constantly doing, but uh, we really decided that it was time to change the conversation about it. So as Susan mentioned, after really more than a year of brainstorming the possibilities and potential of a Keep Louisiana Beautiful University Affiliate Program, an opportunity presented itself in 2019. The EPA Region 4 was administering grant funding for litter prevention and research through its Gulf of Mexico division. Um, for those of you who, like me, didn't, wasn't very familiar with the mission of the Gulf of Mexico division, um, their work is external partners primarily, providing sound scientific and technical information related to research, monitoring, and scientific analysis and by providing financial resources to support state and community action in coastal areas. Um, the division works on projects focused on improving and or restoring water and habitat quality throughout the five Gulf, state and Gulf states and the Mississippi River Basin. With a commitment to voluntary solutions, Gulf of Mexico division projects projects strengthen community resilience by promoting and supporting environmental education and outreach to the public including in vulnerable communities. Keep Louisiana Beautiful and UL Lafayette, um, after the work that we've done together for many years, we saw this program as a real opportunity to launch the Keep Louisiana Beautiful University Affiliate Program and to change the conversation among university students in Louisiana by engaging them in identifying the root causes of litter and, help, and encouraging them and engaging with them to develop long-term sustainable solutions to preventing litter, litter in the first place. We propose the following project vision. Louisiana's university watershed movement is a vision for systemic and cultural change born out of years of collaboration among the state's, lead, state's leaders in litter abatement, beautification, and sustainability. For nearly a decade, leaders in Keep Louisiana Beautiful and University of Louisiana at Lafayette have worked together to address persistent litter issues through healthy community grants, sharing knowledge and data and building capacity in Lafayette Parish. 
We believe with additional support from EPA, we can fully develop a university model for litter assessment and prevention that, is, that was currently being piloted by UL Lafayette on campus and partnering with our K through 12 schools in the parish and in the surrounding community. And then we, we really do believe we can leverage this um, KLB statewide reach and credibility to officially launch a Keep Louisiana Beautiful University affiliate program. The program will engage university and college students throughout the state of Louisiana in a groundswell movement to ensure cleaner, safer waters now and for future generations. Keep Louisiana Beautiful and UL Lafayette are uniquely positioned as leaders in environmental education, research and community engagement to help build capacity across the state in higher education and develop a holistic approach to reducing and eliminating litter. Our collective experience and understanding the challenges we are facing will effectively launch a statewide program that will change a generation of students and develop them as change agents who are informed and experienced in implementing thoughtful, effective solutions. Um, that last part right there is, you know, really the part that as higher education institutes, um, we really get excited about. We want our students to understand the problems, um, but we also want them to have the confidence to go out and solve the problems um, as change agents in their community. And I believe that this Keep Louisiana Beautiful University Affiliate Program is what's gonna do that. Um, so we are ecstatic to announce that our project was one of 17 to receive funding from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's Gulf of Mexico Division, which awarded seven $0.8 million in grant funding for innovative projects focused on reducing the amount of trash in our waterways um, through trash prevention and removal. And now I will present to you an overview of the outcomes we plan to achieve with this initial funding from the EPA, um, our strategies for building capacity um, throughout the state of Louisiana, and give you um, sort of a brief overview of what sort of resources you can expect um, from this program. So these are the outputs that we included in our grant um, application to EPA. And this is how we're going to officially launch the Keep Louisiana Beautiful University Affiliate Program. Um, first, we're going to improve the litter survey tool that we were currently utilizing and create a more user-friendly smartphone app that engages our college students as citizen scientists in studying their campus and community to reduce litter. This app was something that we had started um, to, to develop through the Healthy Community Grant, um, the 2018, 2019 to 2020 funding cycle. Um, we had, we were using paper um, forms with our students and we had been um, improving the inner rater reliability of the, um, the tool, as well as trying to get from them, you know, what, if ultimately what we want this app to be able to do, we want it to be able to use by college students or by high school students or by anybody in any Keep Louisiana Beautiful affiliate program in any community um, to really start to drill down and understand what is creating litter problems in their community um, and how they can best address it. So um, that is one of the first thing, we are already working on it right now, actually, uh, which has been really exciting. Um, so we have students currently on our campus um, continuing to test the different questions um, because ultimately what we wanna be able to do is we want them to collect the data and then we wanna be able to review the data um, back on campus or with at the Keep Louisiana Beautiful headquarters and understand what the problems are throughout our state. Um, so they're going to kind of be our eyes, our ears, our, our citizen scientists in all of our communities, helping us understand what's happening throughout the state. Um, we will also officially launch our Keep Louisiana Beautiful University Affiliate Program to educate and engage the next generation of business owners and community leaders on environmental issues such as waste reduction, litter prevention, marine debris, and recycling. Third, we will provide tools and resources to the, these university affiliates to advance their individual goals and the collective goals of Keep Louisiana Beautiful, the EPA Strategic Plan, and the Gulf of Mexico pro Program. And finally, we will publish annual statewide environmental um, reports of measured results based on analysis of data gathered by citizen scientists, including the type and volume of litter picked up in each site 
and perceptions of site users surveyed from every university affiliate and their community partners. Slide. So now I'm just gonna dive in a little bit more on each one of those objectives. Feel free to stop me at any time if you have specific questions or I can answer them at the end. Um, you know, the, besides really launching this affiliate program, the one thing that I think excites me the most because um, I'm, you know, a nerd um, and I, I like to have data when making decisions is this litter survey tool. Um, so as I mentioned before, we were using a paper form. We're still using a paper form to make sure that we have the right questions, um, but we'll be working to develop a smartphone app. So that way any one throughout the state can help us collect this data. Um, well, it'll, it won't be closed to just the university affiliate programs. Um, we've been discussing that in all of our stakeholder meetings. And that's something that I think everyone felt really strongly about that we wanna open this up. The more data we can collect, the better. Um, but it needs to be accessible to everyone. So we are gonna create a smartphone app um, for users to collect the data in their communities. Um, it will identify geographical litter hotspots on their campus and in their communities, perform litter surveys util utilizing the smartphone app on, cam on their campuses. Um, affiliates will be encouraged to establish baselines, me measure progress, and consider seasonal or cultural events that may influence the proliferation of litter. So one of the things that we've noticed after years of picking up litter um, on our campus is the impacts that some of our cultural, event cultural events have on our, the beauty of our environment. Um, so that's something that we felt really strongly that we need to start assessing um, on a quarterly or annual basis, um, how much do events like Mardi Gras really impact um, our communities? Um, not that we wanna do away with them, but can we change the way we do things um, to make the impacts less? You have a question for me, Campbell? Hey, Gretchen, is this um, app, is this something similar to the Literati app? So there will be a function similar to Literati on the app, we do want, um, the users to be able to geotag the litter so we can get um, an overall assessment of how much litter they're identifying and what type of litter. So you can think of it as there will be a function very similar to Literati, but um, we and we've used the Literati app on campus. Um, but what we found was our students would collect data using Literati, um, but that didn't tell us enough about the site and what were the problems or the events before and after that uh, maybe contributed to litter. So you can you can expect some additional questions such as how many trash cans or within visible site um, throughout the area. Um, where was there a recent big wind or rain events that maybe moved the litter to the site? Um, is it because the trash can possibly just isn't being serviced um, often enough and maybe someone forgot about it so it's overflowing. Um, so we really want to do a deeper dive into the site amenities and specifics um, to see if it's what else is contributing to litter beyond just it's a cup from Starbucks, which is a problem and we want to hold Starbucks accountable. Um, but how, how else can we improve our operations and communities and campuses to prevent litter? And this app will be open to others outside of the universities, um, other communities, other local affiliates, state affiliates, and national affiliates in the week. Absolutely. We really, I, I think for those of us who, from the universities who have been meeting about this regularly, um, I think this is the part that we get really excited about to finally get some data um, collection. That's, you know, I think Literati is amazing and we use Literati already. Um, but I think this is going to help us really start to identify problems on in communities. Um, maybe there's not enough trash cans. Maybe the trash cans that are there are not serviced enough. Um, is it because there's rain events that are washing it from one area to another? So um, those are the things that we, we want to be able to really influence the way we design and operate communities and campuses to prevent litter from becoming a problem. But yes, it will definitely be open. Um, I think the more data we can collect the more we can learn about the problem to begin with. Absolutely. It's very exciting. Thank, Thank you, Gretchen. Thank you.
Um, so this, this um, tool will also be used to quantify litter in each site, similar to Litterati, um, specify the type of litter and if applicable, the brand or business from which the litter, litter originated. Um, it'll also quantify environmental impacts from social and cultural events, such as parades, festivals, or tailgating, um, as well as the time required to restore site to determine the economic impacts of removing the litter. Um, you know, that last one right there, that's one that I think we share quite a bit in the university affiliate meetings that we've been having, the um, brainstorming sessions. Um, for years and years and years, the UL tailgating um, at Cajun Field created a huge amount of litter um, and it would take a lot of human resources the day after to pick up the litter um, and we couldn't we couldn't quite nail down the reason why why were our fans littering our, our facilities that the there are fans they love this place um, and then one year we, we changed the way we were doing we added recycling and we changed the way that we were doing it um, from some temporary cans to having one recycling bin, one trash can in every single tailgating spot. So I think we have about 550 tailgating spots at Cajun Field. Um, and we put recycling bins and trash bins at every single site. And it went from taking a crew of 10 to 12 people an entire day, all of Sunday to pick up the litter on the grounds to really just one or two going around with a litter picker. Um, so just having access to a trash can or recycling can um, made the biggest difference. So. Those are the sorts of things that um, we want to gather information about. Um, is it human caused or is it operational deficiency caused? Um, so those are the things that we're hoping to better understand through um, this process. Slide. A few of the other things that it will measure, as I mentioned, um, access to proper disposal locations. Um, throughout the sites and assess factors that influence the actual utilization of these site amenities, such as bins overflowing from lack of collection or inconvenient locations. Um, the survey will also um, survey users of the site because we want to understand their perceptions, um, their behaviors, and factors that influence their decision make making. So there is going to go be um, a two to three step process when, under when trying to understand the site. It will be collecting data about the litter, collecting data about the, um, the availability of disposal locations um, and how inconvenient or inconvenient they may be. But then we're also gonna talk to the people who are out there. So in the example of tailgating, um, you know, had we taken the time years before to just go and speak to some of those tailgaters and ask them, why are you leaving your trash everywhere? Um, we may have found out much sooner that it was because they didn't have convenient access to trash cans. Um, and we may have been able to understand um, sooner that they didn't like seeing their, um, their alumni, their um, alma mater littered either. Um, so we really want to dive into, um, we want to better understand the social aspects of a site um, and how it's used and why that contributes to litter proliferation. Um, and it will also assess possible environmental factors that influence final location of materials such as stormwater movement or wind. Um, again, that's really important, tying it back to the purpose of this grant to begin with, is we want to keep the litter out of the waterways and out of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so that's a really important piece of the work that we're doing here as well. Um, and especially in places, well, I mean, all of Louisiana at this point, in, place, in places who, that are prone to flash flooding, um, this is something we have to be aware of. Um, litter can clog up drains. It can contribute to flash flooding in our communities. Um, so this is something we have to be hyper aware of. Um, and we're excited that now our students are going to help us become more aware of it. Um, and then I, you know, as best as possible, try to identify some of the likely culprits that have contributed to the litter, such as businesses or organizations, automobile drivers, pedestrians, or animals. Um, this is one of those questions that when we first started putting it in the paper survey, um, we weren't sure what we were going to get back from the students. Um, were they going to be able to identify if it were just someone driving by in a vehicle or if it was an animal that drug it out of a trash can, or if it was a business that had set up shop in a place and was marketing to users. Um, they're doing very well. So they're, they're helping us really try and hone in on those questions to see um, 
possibly can we identify why the litter is ending up there in the first place. Slide. Objective two, this is, you know, this is the big announcement. I'm so excited about it that we're, we're going to create a Keep Louisiana Beautiful University affiliate program to nurture, educate, and engage the next generation of business owners and community, community leaders on environmental issues, such as waste reduction, litter prevention, marine debris, and recycling that will have a great long-term effect on our state and the Gulf of Mexico. So some of the key expectations um, of Keep Louisiana Beautiful University, affiliate per, University Affiliates will be to have regular, regular meetings of um, an advisory committee on campus um, representing a diverse, um, diverse cross-divisional section of the university. Um, this isn't something that's entirely new to University Affiliates. Um, we're going to encourage them and we'll work with them to identify potential um, committees that are already operating that maybe can also take on this responsibility or it may need to become a new one. But um, most universities are already starting to um, really gain synergy in addressing this, these issues. So we wanna help them really try and formalize it. Um, that way we can increase our capacity across the state. Um, and then university affiliates will perform litter um, surveys util utilizing the smartphone app on campus and in their communities um, and be encouraged to establish baseline so they can measure progress as um, years go on, as they change operations, as they invest in new resources on campus or change their purchasing policies. How does that affect litter on their campus? University affiliates will also, um, and this is something that's been a, a really interesting conversation um, through the, um, the stakeholder task force that we've been working with, um, determining a single use disposable baseline. Um, we haven't, I don't think we've, we've fully settled yet on which um, single use disposable that may be, um, but it's something that I think, um, at least on our, on our campus, we've recognized that this is helpful in learning where we're growing and how we can reduce our impacts. Um, they'll have to do a, a, a minimum number of litter cleanups per year, an annual service learning experience that engages um, K through 12 students. Um, and really um, in university speak, that's recruitment right there. So this is an opportunity to really engage in their communities. Um, the students who are already there that may be considering applying to their university, this is a great way for them to really engage those students um, and help them to understand what their responsibilities will be once they become college students. Um, engage in their, engage their university alumni through athletic events or um, other community events to communicate benefits of the program and continue to build capacity across the state. And finally, produce an annual report of their output. Um, with descriptions of how their efforts have improved their community's resilience and contribute to a cleaner watershed and Gulf of Mexico now and for future generations. Additionally, um, each university will be will create a plan. This is something that I think will really sort of develop out of the um, the sustainability coalition and just already we're seeing all of the universities sharing ideas with each other from that task force. Um, you know, I envision that all of the universities will likely start to meet quarterly, whether it's, um, you know, face to face, hopefully soon um, or virtually, but really just to start sharing ideas, um, sharing struggles. You know, we, when we we're talking about what would be on the application, that was something that um, we, we asked to be included in it. What were some of the greatest challenges that have presented in the last year? How did we solve them? I think the more we can share that information with each other, um, the more we can probably find likewise solutions um, to move forward as a state. So um, that's something that I'm really excited about that each year we'll um, develop a plan on how to improve our operations, which include action plans for the campus community based on the findings of the litter survey, um, really aiming to, again, reduce the sources of litter, expand access to recycling and trash bins where necessary, 
and address operational inadequacies, um, measures, measurable outcomes for reducing single use disposables, communication strategies, and um, any sort of prohibited practices that universities take on, such as we now have a ban on balloon releases on campus. Um, and any um, producing a calendar of major events that contribute to litter production on campus. Um, really, again, just trying to drive home the um, idea that we have to become responsible as entire communities um, for not creating a problem to begin with that we then have to solve. The next um, big objective um, and outcome that we're um, committed to providing is resources for our university affiliates to build statewide capacity um, and advancing their individual goals, goals and collective goals of the Keep Louisiana Beautiful and EPA strategic plan, as well as the Gulf of Mexico program. Um, these resources will help them to address the entire life cycle of products from purchasing decisions to final disposal um, and resources for change management include utilizing the litter survey tool. As I mentioned, this will be available to all of the university affiliates, but we are very much committed to making it available to any K through 12 school who wants to use it, any um, community who wants to use it. Um, the more data we can collect, the more we can help um, organizations, private or public, understand why they have litter in their communities and how they can address it. Um, that the more this is helpful. So we're not gonna limit it to universities, um, but that will be something that is available to our university affiliates, as well as mini grants to provide um, initial funds for projects that reduce single use plastics use on campus, reduce litter on campus and waterways and increase awareness of water quality issues. Um, one of the things that we've talked about at length is um, the water bottle refilling stations. We went from having three or four on our campus when we opened our new student union um, to it becoming the most requested improvement of any facility on campus. Um, we now have them, you know, we, we set a goal of having one per building by um, July 30th, 2021. And I think now we're closer to like three per building already. Um, our students have asked to use their self-assessment fees to purchase these and install them in campus. Um, so we're, we're already seeing the benefit of that. We already know that we've already, with the installation of these um, water bottle refilling stations, we've kept more than a million um, plastic water bottles from being used and either recycled or thrown away. Um, so those are the things that students really like. Um, so this program is gonna um, help provide many grants for those sorts of um, investments on campuses, um, as well as a video training series to provide training for university affiliates. Um, next slide. And the, the training series is really gonna be helpful, I believe, because it's gonna be able to um, guide universities in some of the decision-making that um, they will be facing when establishing this university affiliate. Um, other resources that you can expect. Um, this is something that I'm really excited about. Um, Dr. Mark Benefield, who's an LSU professor in the Department of Oceanography and Coastal Sciences, will travel to all of the campuses who become affiliates um, in the program within the next five years um, to share his work studying water quality in the Gulf of Mexico. Having guest speakers on campus is always something that's really exciting, um, especially during times like Earth Week. Um, having an, another expert come onto campus to share their resource research and their expertise is always exciting to us but he's actually going to go into um, bodies of water near campuses um, and take a sample of water and then share his findings with um, the those attending the lecture um, so that's something that i think is is truly unique but really a great way to engage university students in understanding the larger impacts from litter um, to hopefully really inspire them to work really hard to address it. Um, additionally, there will be a web-based university affiliate reporting system. So all of the application process, the annual reporting will be done online through a web-based um, web system. And then we will have forums for institutional co collaboration to share our successes um, in changing our operations and, and campuses. And to also sort of, you know, brainstorm together some of the um, 
challenges and how that we're all facing. Um, I think all of us had a unique challenge that we were able to provide um, feedback for, um, and that feedback cycle is really important. So um, this is something that I really look forward to because I want to learn from all the other universities in Louisiana. And then um, the final outcome that we will um, annually will be producing for EPA, but this will also um, become an annual requirement for Keep Louisiana Beautiful University affiliates. Um, this is how we learn, this is how we grow, and this is how we get better. Um, we measure and then we, um, we learn from it and we learn how to better manage it. So every year um, the affiliates will publish annual environmental reports of measured results um, based on their analysis that's gathered by the citizen scientists um, and user surveys. Um, and then self-report other actions that they're doing. Um, maybe they've come up with some really unique way to reduce food waste on their campus. Um, maybe they've implemented a purchasing policy that has changed the way they, um, they operate on campus and drastically reduced the um, waste that's produced on campus and also the litter that's produced on campus, whether that's a bag ban or a straw ban. Um, any, anytime we can learn from each other how they were able to institutionalize those sorts of changes, how they got buy-in from their um, dining service contractors, um, those are things that we can really learn from each other. Um, and especially keeping it to Louisiana. Um, you know, we all go to national um, conferences, but in Louisiana, we do have different challenges. And I think the more we can learn from each other and we can push progress together, um, the faster we'll get to the point that we wanna be. Um, so reports will include progress um, from each university affiliate um, and specific outcomes for some of the following activities, litter removal. So what kind of litter? Um, and how much litter was removed from each campus, um, the number of pieces of litter that are geotagged and picked up, and that'll be measured by the app, um, number of each type of litter that is geotagged and picked up. For example, 1,000 Mardi Gras beads on St. Mary Boulevard following the homecoming parade, or 750 receipts from the parking tower during the fall semester. Um, that's one operation that we're changing on campus because our students measured it and we were able to say, look, we need to stop printing these parking receipts or at least give the option to not take it because it's just creating litter. Um, so we've been able to change operations on campus just by constantly observing, collecting data, having real numbers. Um, we've, we've stopped printing receipts altogether mostly in most of our operations on campus. Um, next slide. And some of the other information that will be in the annual environmental report, both from university affiliates and from Keep Louisiana Beautiful and UL to EPA will be um, the total amount of litter that's been removed from their environment per volunteer each year. Again, that's gonna be measured through the app. Um, comparisons of litter by type and size. There were 15 pieces of litter on campus um, versus 3,000 pieces of litter in a subdivision and a million pieces of litter along I-10. Um, really start to hone in on how, is it because there's you know, not enough litter crews on our campus? Is it because there's no litter crews in a subdivision? Um, why is there more litter in some places than others? Is it maintenance? Is it traffic? Um, is it lack of amenities to reduce it? Um, and then changes in litter volume over time across different locations and an analysis of major litter producing events. The reports will also report on the um, updates on established baselines for single use disposables. Um, you know, one of the things that we also, um, we shared in our uh, stakeholder meetings, some, again, some of the successes that we've had on our campus and we can learn from each other um, is the, the incredible amount of um, reduction of waste that we were able to achieve during our football games because we at one time had a crack and pour um, 
policy where our um, our vendors would crack the beer and then pour it in a plastic cup, creating twice as much waste. Um, and plas the plastic cups were not recyclable. So um, we did away with that and it we were able to really reduce our litter, um, I mean, our waste on campus. So that was, you know, just some of the different policies that we can learn from each other. Um, and then a baseline for water bottle refilling stations on campus and the number of plastic bottles saved by each refilling station. And then finally, I'm gonna kind of give you a brief overview of what our five-year timeline looks like. This is a five-year grant. Um, so we are already well into year one or we really kind of started the work a year and a half ago. So um, we're already improving and, invalid and validating the litter survey tool. We're working on a smartphone app um, and we're, we are already well on our way by working with this coalition um, to creating an affiliate and grant requirements as um, and really trying to hone in on what is needed in the training videos. Um, so all of that's gonna happen in year one. In year two, we will open up um, the process to becoming a university affiliate. Um, you know, I, I think we're actually gonna surpass this goal of recruiting and training for university affiliates. I think we'll be well past that in year two, which is really exciting. Um, Dr. Benefield will start his lecture series for any of the affiliates who sign up. Um, and then we'll begin to award grants. And then from there, we're just gonna continue to build upon um, that, that success. And um, you know, our vision at UL is by the time that we get to the end of year five, um, I think Susan and Cabell and Keep Louisiana Beautiful can always count on the university being a partner in this. Um, but we hope by the time that we get to year five that this is a well um, operating affiliate program, just like KLB is. Um, so we'll continue to be involved, but you know, what we have, the work we're doing over the next five years is to set it up for long-term sustainable success. Thank you, Gretchen. Thank you, Cabell. This has generated a lot of excitement, I think. We have some questions and comments from the people on today's session. I'd like to bring back Susan Russell, Executive Director of Keep Louisiana Beautiful. And we could have a little conversation. We have some comments and questions. Hi, Susan. Hello, ladies. Mm -hmm. Well, this has generated a lot of excitement and um, we have some questions about timelines. What do um, universities that wanna be a part of this coalition what do they need to do? Um, just a host, a host of questions. I'll throw it out to um, both of you ladies about the coalition. Awesome. Sure. Well, before we get into that, I do want to mention that this university affiliate level, that there's only one other state in the country that has a collegiate uh, affiliate level, and that's in California. And so, by, we're kind of pioneers in this regard. And I think that this program will serve as a wonderful model for other states in, in the country. And so I'm thrilled to be a part of uh, providing leadership for the, the universities. Uh, and I think it, um, it has some great uh, growth potential. So I just wanted to, to mention that. Um, Cabell, you were asking about timelines. Yeah. Um, so I think between now and the end of our fiscal year, we're going to continue to work with the steering committee and fine tune um, everything. We're also going to be building out our website so that a lot of this, as mentioned before, will take place on the website, the application, the review period, those kinds of things. Um, we will be ready in the beginning of our fiscal year, which starts in July to actually, uh, you know, start uh, entertaining um, uh, and discussing with, with, with universities and with community affiliates who are interested. The timeline of accepting applications of November 1st and, and, and uh, April 1st, that is for both state community affiliates as well as university affiliates. And so we will accept applications twice a year, but clearly universities, community groups can be working on their application and in conversation with us 
regarding whether this is a good fit for them, et cetera, uh, anytime throughout the year. And Cab will, you'll be the one taking the lead role in that. She'll be kind of steering the ship in that regard. Okay, awesome. Did you have any other comments, Susan? Did you have anything for Gretchen? I didn't want to, um, you know, Gretchen, we've talked about this quite often, the, the litter assessment tool, um, uh, survey tool. I think that that is really just, I'm just so excited about it. You know? <laughs> We've all been, you know, when I was an affiliate director, I remember making copies of these data sheets and handing them out to the volunteers with clipboards and pens. And oh my goodness, you know, we now volunteers, they all have these, you know, mm -hmm. as they're going out. And, um, and so we're always, um, you know, searching for ways that we can collect more accurate data and um, consistent data. And as long as we're all tracking it in these various ways, then we lose a lot of that, right? Mm -hmm. And we also want, so we need to make it easy. We need to make it consistent. We need to make it more accurate um, because that is going to fuel additional stakeholder support. That's gonna help us raise additional money. I mean, it's just, it's gonna help us in, in every regard, right? Absolutely. And so that is so exciting to me to think that we'll have our universities, our affiliate network, and really any organization, any group, any individual will be able to install this and use it and, re and report it to us. Um, and so that is, that's really, really exciting to me. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to add about that, that you think people should know about and, and remind me because I don't, <laughs> I didn't remember what year do you think realistically we will be, ha we will have that available to the masses? I think our, our goal is to have it ready version one, to have it ready by next fall. Um, you know, we, we have really honed in on the, um, the paper survey. Um, I think we, we've now, we're close to um, Dean Yarbrough's working and thank, you know, thank goodness we have Dean Yarbrough and his um, social sciences background, but um, he's really honing in on making sure that we have the right questions. So that way, um, you know, Jane in Youngsville, who's using the survey, um, whatever data she's reporting back to the database, um, she's answering the same question that John in Monroe understands. Um, so that, that's really important to us that we have iterator reliability um, because we won't be able to have all of the users discuss it. Um, we also wanna make sure that it's useful for um, the decision makers uh, on campuses and in communities. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, one of the ways that Literati has been really successful is affecting policy and changing purchasing decisions. Um, I think we'll see that with this app as well, that we'll, we'll have some purchasing policies changed, um, but we also want to ensure that it's helping, um, you know, grounds managers or facilities managers or public works directors um, understand that they may have an that is leading to litter proliferation in their community. Um, and we may be able to provide suggestions on how to address it. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. You know, we are used to doing litter surveys, you know, at least every year. And I, I preach and I preach, it's just not um, something that we do because it's a requirement. It right. is designed to be a tool to help guide us in identifying solutions. And so just in that same, you know, vein of thought that this tool it's not just about entering how many pieces of litter we are removing. Right. It is about looking at the bigger picture and saying, what other surrounding elements are contributing to this so that we can devise a plan to address that. Exactly. Whether it's a lack of receptacles with infrastructure or that is a dumpster that is too small or not closed or whatever it might be. You know, we started awarding trash receptacle grants several years ago and 
as part of that, our recipients, they must do litter assessments prior to the receptacles being installed. Mm -hmm. And then after they installed, a few weeks later, a few months later, so that we can document the reduction of litter. And it's directly related to the closest, the closer proximity to the trash receptacle, then there's documented 52% reduction in litter. And so we know that those types of infrastructure improvements help reduce litter. And so if we can make that connection on you know, campus wide or community wide, then it becomes not just something that we're used to doing is so that we can say we removed X amount of tons. It's not about just removing, but it's about preventing. So exactly. what is that next step and what are the things that we're doing to prevent? I always say we should, we're, we're not a litter pickup organization and we should never be one. It's one of the things we do and it's, it's a necessary tool in our toolbox, but it's, we really need to be looking at litter prevention. Right. Um, and so it's all those other additional layers that this app is going to bring to the table that I'm most excited about. And, I, you know, I think also along those lines of, um, you know, the idea that every affiliate will have to have sort of a calendar of major community events that contribute to litter. Um, you know, again, it, it's not just, we shouldn't just clap for, for our volunteers when they go out and pick up the litter after Mardi Gras or homecoming parades. Yes, that's incredible. And we, we, we applaud them and we're, we're very grateful for them. Um, but you know, something that we've started, started to adopt on campus is if you're gonna have an event that's gonna produce materials, you have to come up with a cleanup plan. Um, you know, so that, that's something that we're really trying to encourage on campus, um, you know, for get on board day or for homecoming parades, what is your cleanup plan? Um, because we can't, we can't just rely on hopefully there's some good Samaritans that come after you. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we're really just trying to change the conversation. Um, and I think this program is really going to help elevate that conversation a good bit on campuses and in communities. Yeah. And the other thing that really excites me is just being able to engage um, this, this younger generation in our mission work. You know, they have, uh, you know, tons of excitement and energy. They want to make a positive mark, you know, on the world. And they're also, you know, masters of social media. And so we all know the power of that. So, you know, and we, we really, um, you know, I mentioned somewhere along the line, I guess it was about three years ago, um, every year we have the big event um, on campus and typically we send out about, you know, and our healthy community grants with KLB have helped sponsor that over the years. Um, we typically send out somewhere between 600 to 750 students to pick up a seven mile stretch of University Avenue um, from I-10 to the airport. Um, and they pick up a massive amount of litter. That's what those yard work song, um, litter letters are about. Um, and we started to see that students were getting worn out on it. Um, and I think, you know, it, it took, we, we had to sit back and sort of swallow our ego a little bit and um, understand that just giving them a bag um, and tell them to go get litter wasn't enough to engage them. They didn't felt engaged. They really did not feel like they were making enough of an impact on that one day. Um, but then when we started talking to them about the impacts of what it meant, you know, th this means litter is not going to get in the waterway. This means that, um, you know, the economic impacts. Um, and then they started to get a little bit more engaged. Um, and it didn't so much feel like we were giving them a, a litter picker with an apology. Um, instead, we started asking them, can you please tell us why this litter is there? Um, and that changed how they engaged with us. It changed, um, we, we're no longer giving them a litter picker with an apology. We were giving them a litter picker with a mission. Um, and that's really changed the way they've engaged with that us. Sticker. Huh? That should be a bumper sticker. It should be, right? <laughs> I love that. And, and you're right. And it's not just, you know, with young people and, and on campuses. It's, it's, you know, with all segments, it's not enough. And it should never be to just say, don't litter, recycle. They need to know more. They want to know more. Mm -hmm. Why, how does that personally affect me? 
Um, we are a society that's very me, me, me oriented, right? And so if they don't, if we don't do a better job making that connection of how it affects them personally, their home, their livelihood, their family, then unfortunately, a lot of times we, we miss them. We miss that opportunity. Right. Making those connections on the economy, on quality of life, on safety, on you know, water quality and, and, and marine and habitat and wildlife, you know, those are the things, the bigger picture, they are smarter than just remove litter. Exactly. You know, we really want them, we want to, them to feel like they're being empowered rather than punished whenever we give this assignment to them. Um, so, I, you know, we've school? already seen that sort of turn the conversation around already. So I think, you know, doing this statewide is, is going to change the conversation for college students about litter. Yeah. Yeah. And those are our next generation of leaders. Right. So when we talk exactly. about breaking the cycle, you know, this is, I think this is how we do it. And, and like I said before, this is why, uh, to me, this is one of the most exciting things that that we have embarked on. And I am so glad to have ULL uh, kind of leading the charge with us. And again, uh, before we close out, I want to just thank Grambling, Xavier, LSU, ULL, Nichols, Tulane, and Department of Ed for volunteering and all their time uh, providing leadership through this. And, and it's not over. Like we said, the Sustainability Coalition, I think some great things are gonna come as a result of that. Um, because again, you know, the whole theme throughout all this whole presentation has been just, you know, bringing more people into the fold, you know, expanding our influence, learning from each other, sharing. Um, we are we are greater together. And uh, these issues are vast and we need everyone working together to make a difference. And so thank you, Gretchen, um, and thank you to the committee um, and for everything that y'all have done. We are thrilled and just so excited for the future. So thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you, Susan and Gretchen for your inside drive and passion for our work. Um, it's contagious for me and I admire both of you so much and I hope it's contagious um, to others. So thank you so much for today. And we're very excited about um, this expansion to reach communities and change behavior and reach an audience for the next generation to become community leaders themselves in environmental issues. So um, thank you and we're excited about the expansion. Uh, we have two more sessions as part of the virtual state conference. The recycling partnership is this Thursday, November 19th. And our final session will be Tuesday, November 24th to understand litter laws. And uh, both sessions begin at 9 a.m. Registration is on KLB's website, keeplouisianabeautiful.org. We hope that all of you have a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you.